This one's wife. Does Table 12 know she is disliked? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As you know, I don't use this one's wife's name, primarily to emphasise the point that the only reason we know about her is that she is this one's wife, formerly known as Harry's wife. I did in the early days utilise her name, but as time has gone on it seems apt that she should just be referred to in this way, because after all, that's how the grifting individual has become known around the world. And she is known around the world. A narcissism, if it were able to do so, would be giving itself a self-congratulatory slap on the back as a consequence of the situation that she's become elevated to. Hitherto, a relatively unknown actress of mediocre capabilities who had managed to ensnare a husband, some say a second husband, before Harry, Corey the chef and various other romantic interests, wasn't really going anywhere. She was making a degree of a mark upon the Toronto scene as her narcissism propelled her to undertake some social climbing, but then she hit the jackpot as she managed to ensnare old ginger bollocks, become part of the British royal family, and thereafter become a household name. There may be some tribes lurking in the Amazon who haven't heard of her. I dare say that you're rather envious of that fact. But for the rest of us, nary a day goes by without there being some news item about her, which of course behooves me to utilise such information to educate you all the more about narcissism and at the same time engage in taking the piss because she is just so eminently piss takeable from. All of this results in her having massive coverage. We know that there are the supine publications such as Hello, Town and Country, People.com, Tatler, Harper's Bazaar, sometimes the Daily Mirror, that are favourable to her, pumping out the PR puff pieces. The Daily Mail is often critical of her, but invariably publishes a lot about her because they know that it gets the readership all frothing and that they like to engage in a hate read or a grudge read about her. The Telegraph and the Times, despite supposedly being broadsheets, frequently comment on her and invariably do so adversely. She pops up in blogs and videos on mainstream news, GB news, BBC news, your news in your particular country and is regularly spoken about and written about. We know that she has a rump of deluded supporters, the Sugars. There are many people that would wish that people would stop talking about her. There are many others who are invested in watching the train wreck, wanting to see it eventually arrive at destination fucked, as Aussie man would say. But during all of this, I've noted repeatedly, people querying, does she recognise and realise just how disliked she is? Well, the short answer is, yes, she does know that she's disliked. She can't help but notice it. Whether it is critical headlines in some of the tabloid newspapers, whether it's the fact that she's been mocked by Family Guy and South Park, whether... It's a latest celebrity criticising her behaviour, calling out her desperation, which becomes reported on. She knows that those are all unfavourable and demonstrate a dislike of her. But it goes further than that. This is a woman who doesn't really do a lot apart from swan around in private jets, turning up at concerts and piggybacking others' philanthropic endeavours to make herself look good. She doesn't sit down and work her butt off every single day. She has a staff to look after her home and her children. Indeed, I think the children seem to spend more time with the staff than they do with her. Once again, she's away from home, swanning around Vancouver and its environs. It leads to the question of what does she actually do all day? And, given the level of her narcissism and the amount of time that she has available... It's very clear that she does spend time combing through articles about herself, looking at videos that are made about her, going below the line and looking in the comment section. In a forthcoming video, 
I'm going to address the fact that she's actually outed herself with regard to her presence below the line. But because we know that she frequents all of these places, because her narcissism tells her to do so, she cannot stand to not know. A greater narcissist has no interest in the tittle-tattle issued about them. They just regard that as the mutterings of the lumpen proletariat and so on. They recognise that when you're famous it comes with the territory and they've got much better and more important things to do with their time than spend their time going through the comments and looking at what everybody has to say about them. On the occasions that they might happen upon such information, they invariably find it amusing because, after all, they are a colossus, they are a titan, and they just brush this criticism off and get on with the next project that they're engaged in. But not this one's wife. Her middle-mid-range narcissism means that she takes an avid interest in what is being said about her as part of the fuel gathering. But the problem that she has is that much of it is critical. Let's just take one of my videos, for example, one that I put out yesterday, The Smirking Grifter. And as I explained yesterday for the Geordies, it's smirking, not smoking. Let's have a look at the comments. There are many hundreds of them, and I'm just going to give you a selection. Amos Van Mercer writes, Oh, Canada is less than 90 seconds long. This one's wife cannot bear to have the focus taken off of her for less than 90 seconds. As a proud Canadian, I want to sing God Keep Our Land Glorious and Free from this pair of disrespectful ingrates. It is quite the achievement to exasperate Canadians. Well done, grifters. Critical comment. Delightful by design, by Denise. No one in the entire world is capable of putting her in her place, question mark. It is the most absurd thing we've ever witnessed. Critical. Aquarius 5461. She continually disrespects Queen Elizabeth's wishes, even though she's passed away. The Harkles do not represent the monarchy whatsoever. It's really pissing me off now, actually. Critical comment. CB2514. Completely immature behaviour. In terms of T.O.W.'s respect, what always stands out for me is the 4040 fast video, in which she and McCarthy slightly mocked both the Queen and the English people and seemed very impressed with how clever they were. It's astounding that T.O.W. holds herself out as some sort of beacon of civility, kindness and compassion. Critical comment. Holly Daytrick, 2515. Either she refuses to show anyone or anything respect, or she's mentally ill. I'm so tired of the non-stop coverage of this person of little to no consequence. Just a traveller. When any country's national anthem is being played, one must stand to attention to show respect for that country and its people and the values they stand for. T.O.W. has no respect. She has no training. Thanks, H.G., for showing how her narcissism comes through in these situations. Laura, F4202, I'm not sure if this smug smirk translates as those stupid Canadians are having to pay for our security again, or if only stupid Harry knew just how many hockey players I've had. Critical comment. That is just a handful. But as I talk to you now and scroll through, comment after comment after comment is critical. Now, of course... Most people that comment on my videos dislike this one's wife, and therefore it's not such a surprise that these comments are critical. But nevertheless, they exist. And thus, this one's wife, as she is bound to do, to look upon my videos and those of other people, and she will look in the comments section and she will see criticism after criticism after criticism. Valid and based on evidence, but criticism nonetheless. It's all challenge fuel. Now, here, she doesn't reply. There isn't anybody that we suspect is this one's wife lurking in the comments section. She may well complain to Harry about the unfairness that wretched H.G. Tudor and his flying monkeys, no doubt, she says, in respect of all of you commenting in a critical fashion about her. Or she jettisons it, thinking it is... The ramblings and rantings of envious, or she'll probably use jealous, individuals. The point is this. Table 12, as she is sometimes known as, as a consequence of the fact that she was just stuck on that table at the recent variety event, is such that she knows full well that she is not disliked. She can't avoid it. It's in newspaper headlines, 
It's in broadcast news, it's in blog articles, it's contained in videos, and it's all over social media, with comments upon every conceivable platform from X through to YouTube, and in below-the-line comments on magazines and digital representations of newspapers. She knows that she's disliked, but as I've explained to you before, it doesn't sink in. Her narcissism basically tells her that anybody that criticises her is a fool, a moron, a hater, a misogynist and a racist. That someone as wonderful as her could only be truly liked, and if you don't like her, don't love her, don't admire her, don't adore her, there is something very wrong with you. Thus, while she can see the ocean of dislike for her, it doesn't sink in, it doesn't compute. Her narcissism, effective as always, causes her to dismiss it. And while she knows that there is a huge body of individuals that dislike her, she does not accept the legitimacy of that dislike. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.